You may already know that measuring headspace is a thing, but you may not be sure how to do it or why you should even care. Understanding headspace is pretty easy and has benefits starting with increased bass life all the way to possibly better accuracy. There are several ways of measuring headspace and today we're going to explore at least five different ways of doing it, starting with one that's almost free, going all the way to some very premium options. But before we control it, we need to understand it. And by definition, headspace is the distance measured from the closed chamber's breech face to the chamber feature that limits the insertion depth of the cartridge placed in it. What? Maybe a little bit more simply, it's the dimension from the bolt face to the reference point or a datum line on a shoulder. For 99% of the community out there, if you're trying to understand headspace, you're likely more concerned with a comparative measurement than one listed on a drawing. You can use headspace gauges like the ones here from Forrester to see if a chamber is within a certain tolerance. That is why they're called go and no-go gauges. In your reloading, it's more likely that you'll be using some type of a device to measure the distance between the case head to a reference point or a datum line on a fired piece of brass. We'll be using 6.5 Creedmoor as our example, but you can substitute whatever caliber of interest and find out the information that you need. When you start looking at SAMI specs for your caliber of interest, you're going to see that there's likely going to be two drawings. Unless you're chambering a barrel, you're probably interested in the one labeled cartridge, not the chamber. But for the true headspace dimension, you are going to need to reference the chamber drawing. It has a symbol that looks similar to the NATO head stamp symbol, and you can see the size for the datum on the shoulder as well as the chamber headspace measurement. For 6.5 Creedmoor, it lists a max of 1.551 inches and a min of 1.541 inches. Do I personally need that info? Not really. I'm most interested in the dimension of 0 .400 inches as this will be the datum dimension that I'm going to be comparing from. An interesting point though, when we talk about our go and no-go gauges later, the go gauge is the minimum, 1.5410 inches, and we'll be using that in just a minute. Now if we go back to our cartridge drawing, and we compare the same place on the drawing, we will see again the 0 .400 dimension that corresponds to the drawing of 0.5438 minus 0 .007 inches. If we are measuring headspace on our fired cases, this is the measurement that we would care about. Or do we? It's likely we're not going to change this dimension without some type of machine work. But if you're a reloader, we can take this as a reference point and make sure we aren't oversizing our brass. Now most people when they talk about measuring headspace are using this term very loosely. What we're typically doing is using some type of a comparator and measuring this dimension. This allows you to size for that magical two or three thousandths bump that everyone's talking about. So now that we know the 0.4 inch dimension, we can start finding suitable comparators. Most of the options we're going to go over there are available at our channel sponsor, Midway USA. Now the absolute lowest cost thing that I could think of to take this measurement is a 40 caliber fired case. The problem is in reality this truly won't be the exact 0 .400 inches that we need from our measurement, but it's pretty close. So let's see if we can see the difference in our dimensions from our go and no go gauges. When we talk about our headspace gauges, we need to know that the go gauge measures 1.541 inches to the datum line and the no-go gauge measures four thousandths higher than that, so 1.545 inches. So we're going to need to take some type of a comparator. We can see if we zeroed on our case and then measured the headspace gauge for our go gauge, which is 1.541 inches, we're actually measuring 1.544. So it's pretty close, but still not exact. However, if we just want to use it for a comparator, we can zero here and then see if we can see the four thousandths difference in our no-go gauge. Balancing the center gauge the best we can, we can see it. We see somewhere very close to the 4,000th difference that's there. Not exact, but hey, for free, or pretty much free, it's not too shabby. Personally, I don't really recommend it, but if your budget is zero, I guess it's something you can try. The next option, and the cheapest that I would truly recommend using, is from Hornady. This kit offers comparator size in the exact sizes that are going to be referenced in the SAMI drawings. 0 .330, 0 .350, 0 .375, 0 .4, and 0 .420. Now another video I watched explained that this was the only way to measure the absolute value. And frankly, I don't really agree with that. Now we can measure the comparator body with a pin gauge and see that it is actually 0 .400 inches internally. But if you look closely, there's a slight taper to the edge. And when we measure our headspace gauge, we will see it. Starting with zeroed calipers, measuring our go gauge is 1.5310 inches, a full 10,000th difference than the standard that we're measuring. Probably not a real shocker here that when we put our no-go gauge in, we again see a similar offset. But the real question is can we see the difference? What you would typically do is take our go gauge, zero it, 
and then see our no-go gauge measures about four and a half thousandths difference. So, can we see the difference? Absolutely. What we really have to ask ourselves is do we care when we're setting up our sizing die? Very likely, no. But you shouldn't measure this and then be afraid something is drastically wrong when it doesn't match up with the Sammy drawing. Another downside is if you lose your bushing and you have to get a different one, it might not be exactly the same. And if you've recorded a whole bunch of comparative measurements so you knew what your headspace was bumped back to, the old ones may no longer be relevant and they might be different moving forward. You really can't be sure. So in my opinion, the true purpose for this gauge is to see how far you push the shoulder back when you're sizing your cases and really nothing more. Be very careful if you're comparing the measurements you get from this to a Sammy drawing. Our next tool is from RCBS and it's the Precision Micrometer. It's pretty neat and very easy to use. You can simply put in a fired case, record the measurement, size it, and then measure the difference. Additionally, it has the ability to comparatively measure your projectile seated depth, but I'm going to try and stay only focused on headspace. If we use this with our headspace gauges, we can see the measure difference is again four thousandths. This may be a kind of hard to catch on camera, but if you can see with our go gauge in, this is measuring just over two thousandths. Inserting our no-go gauge and we can see the measurement goes to six. Six minus two is four, the exact difference between our headspace gauges. One of the things that's very important is that the place on the gauge where the primer would be is hollowed out. Notice you can see the primer through the case. This ensures that any pressure signs on your primer from the previous firing event don't show up in the measurement. This is an extremely important detail. Using other methods, you probably want to remove the primer before measuring as this can quite easily affect your measurements. For this tool, it's not really a concern. The real downside of this tool in my opinion is that they're cartridge specific. You do need one for every caliber you load if you want to use them. And the cost can add up pretty quick. But overall, it's a really neat tool and it's very easy to use. Another very quality option is the Ellie Wilson Case Gauge Depth Micrometer. You may notice that nowhere in that name do they mention headspace. Now whether you agree with the marketing or not, the website reads it has never been easier to measure your case's headspace before and after sizing. So clearly, that's what this is for. We've already confirmed zero on our tool, let's insert our go gauge and see what happens. This may be a little hard to read, but you can see the measurement is actually negative six. So from our zero, we're actually six thousandths back. Go ahead and insert our no-go gauge, and hopefully you can see the measurement is down at negative two. So the difference between those measurements is obviously four thousandths, just like the gauges are labeled. With just a little practice for the feel of turning the knob, these are pretty easy to use, and if you're buying case gauges anyway, this may be the ideal solution for you. You do have to have case gauges for every caliber you intend to measure. They're not ridiculously expensive, somewhere in the ballpark of $35-ish depending on the caliber. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of having these gauges by themselves, but if you are, I really do understand why. But overall, this system works pretty well. Before I tried it, I was a little bit concerned that maybe if I had some brass that was slightly out misshapen, they're still able to fit in, and though clearly that's not sized enough, you can see with the gauge, it's easily measured and it worked no problem. So overall, I don't know that I have anything to complain about. My highest end recommendation is the option from Short Action Customs. These comparators are probably the most expensive to get started, but the caliber inserts aren't really too expensive at around $30. They're made from stainless steel and basically have the exact shoulder angle of the caliber that they're designed for. It's machined into the insert. This makes them extremely easy to use and get repeatable information. You do need to remove the primer unless you choose to use the Short Action Customs base comparator in conjunction with two short bodies to do this measurement. So to be clear, the shoulder inserts are designed to measure relative headspace. They are not designed to measure headspace off of a reamer print or a Sammy drawing. If you're looking to measure the actual headspace, they do offer datum gauges. And is likely the real only true way to measure the headspace if that's important to you. For me, it really hasn't been a concern. We can see as before we're going to zero our unit, and we're going to measure 1.4465. But again, this is a comparator, so this measurement really means nothing. What we really need to do is zero it out. Now that we're zeroed out, let's measure our no-go gauge. It's a little bit awkward to hold, but you can see our difference of four thousandths. Having the shoulder angle machined in these inserts just makes it easier to get the measurement faster and more repeatably. So if you're going to invest in a system for lots of different calibers, it is a little bit pricey, but these still work really, really well. As a bonus item, I'm sure if I don't mention, somebody else will in the comments below, is the Reading Instant Indicator. I don't have one personally, but I'm sure someone will tell you in the comments below how much they like theirs. It's a similar tool that does a similar job. 
regardless of the system that you're using. If you want to see how to simply adjust your die for proper headspace, check out this video right here. I'll see you in that video, and until then, stay safe in small groups.